Now in this question then, what I've done is I've copied the diagram down and what we need to do is put on the forces acting on the beam AB. Now we're told that it's a uniform beam of length 2 meters, so if we've got 0.3 meters here, 0.3 meters here, that's already 0.6 meters, so that means that the distance between these ropes here is going to be 1.4 meters and so the weight's going to act down the middle here and the distance from here to here is going to be 0.7 meters and the same applies to here. So what I'll do is I'll write that in as 0.7 meters that's from there to there and the same applies on this next bit 0.7 meters from there to there. Okay? Now we put the weight in. We're told that the beam has a mass of 20 kilograms, so that's going to be 20 G newtons acting downwards. And we've got this gymnast here, and the gymnast has got a mass of 50 kilograms, so there's going to be the weight acting down here, 50 G newtons. Now, in order to support these weights, what we've got is tensions acting upwards in P and Q. And the tensions will in fact be different because the gymnast is not directly in the middle here necessarily. So we'll put the tensions in, they act upwards, we'll call this tension in P T subscript P newtons and the tension at Q which acts upwards we'll call that T Q newtons. Alright, now then what we've got to do then is show that the tension in the rope at P, alright, this tension here is 588 minus 350x newtons and to do that what you need to do is take moments and the best place to take moments is about the point Q. And why is that? Well, if you take moments about Q, because the force, the tension TQ, passes through Q, it won't get used in the equation. It doesn't have any turning effect about Q. So, what we're going to do then, take moments about Q, we need to set up a sense, a positive sense, and I'm going to select going round in a clockwise direction as being my positive sense. So, if we're doing this, remember that moment is the force times the perpendicular distance to the point that you're rotating about, in this case Q. So, taking moments, if we start then with the tension in this rope here, at P, we've got the force TP multiplied by the distance, the perpendicular distance to Q. Well, that's going to be 0.7 plus 0.7, in other words, 1.4. So we've got TP times 1.4. That's the moment then of this force. Now, we'll take the moment of the gymnast. Now the gymnast, its weight acts downwards and that would want to rotate about Q in an anti-clockwise direction. All right? So that's going to be in a negative sense. So we've got minus 50G for the force multiplied now by the distance from here to here. Well, we know that the total distance is 1.4, we take off this x here, so we've got 1.4 minus x. Next, we consider the weight of the beam, and again, this will want to turn about Q in an anti-clockwise sense. All right? So we've got minus 20g multiplied by this distance here, which is clearly 0.7 so 0 
And this is the resultant moment now. We've taken into account all the forces. Remember, this force, because it passes through Q, would be TQ times zero, if you like, which would be zero, have no effect at all on the turning. So this is the resultant moment. And because the beam is in equilibrium, it doesn't turn. That resultant moment is zero. So all I need to do now is just clean this up and rearrange it for the tension TP. All right. So if we clean this up, we've got for the first term 1.4 T. Then multiply this out. 50 G. G is 9.8. Okay. In fact, I'm going to leave the G at the moment. We've got minus 50 times the 1.4. That comes to 70. So we've got minus 70 G. Then you've got plus 50 GX. And then minus 20 times 0.7 is minus 14. So you get minus 14 G. And that equals 0. Rearranging this then for the tension TP, we have that TP equals, all I need to do is add the 70G, the 14G, and take away 15GX from both sides, and then finally divide by 1.4. So what you've got is 84G, that's if you group the 70 and the 14 together, minus 50GX, all divided by the 1.4. And that means that, therefore, the tension... in the rope at P equals, so you do 84G divided by 1.4. If you do that on your calculator, you'll find you get 588. And if you do 50G X, G being 9.8, do that on your calculator, divide by 1.4, you'll get minus 350X. So it's that force in Newtons. Okay. Well, that brings us now to the end of the first part of this question.